I've been having a lot of issues with the gauges in my car fluctuating pretty dramatically when I use the turn signals or I turn on the lights or I turn off the lights. This is all due to poor grounding inside, somewhere inside the car, inside the cluster, I think. Um, it's uh, it's gotten worse since I've owned the car, um, and usually the temperature gauge is so far off that it's pegged, um, and it would just cause me to worry that the, the whole car is running incredibly hot. I never knew how much gas I had. It would show that the reserve tank <laughs> was on, and then, but it would show that I have half a tank of gas. So I even bought a thermometer to um, make sure that the car wasn't overheating, um, which is a super handy tool to have in any case. But uh, I, I'd been in here before. I went after some uh, kind of fried wiring for the turn signal indicator and uh, resoldered that, reconnected it, kind of patched it back together. Uh, but it didn't fix the problem, which was pretty infuriating. And uh, a lot, of, a lot of the advice that I've been reading had to do with checking all the, the ground connections. If you look behind the dash, there's this in, almost ridiculous number of ground wires that terminate um, at screw connections in the chassis. Um, I can say pretty confidently that that has nothing to do with your instrument cluster fluctuation. Uh, Kent Bergsma talks about this kind of thing too, uh, these kind of gremlins that you see in, uh, you know, the windshield wipers and the lights and, and, you know, he recommends to check the grounds that are behind the headlights and that's excellent advice, but I think for, in my case, these, none of these ground connections were the issue. And the funny thing about Kent Bergsma is that if you think you're doing something original, making a video about whatever, he's already done a video and sure enough after I made this here he is checking the instrument cluster circuit boards um, for burnt ground traces which is what I'm about to get to. I'm not exactly sure when I started to suspect this uh, 15 pin connector that goes into the back of the cluster but if I took voltage uh, measurements from pins 2 and 3 which are the um, feed the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge uh, if I turn the lights on or the turn signals on, the the voltages would go all over the place. So I knew there was something going on inside that connector. So I I looked up as carefully as I could the the information about that pin diagram, which was specific to my car, and notated all the colors and the numbers of the pins and made some diagrams. And then I popped off the connector cap, which was pretty terrifying, um, and went after it with some deoxid, which um, it cleans it, this, this deoxid spray, it cleans the connectors, and it also leaves this kind of lubricant um, residue on there that, that protects it from, I think, corroding even more. And I very carefully put it all back together in the same order, and I put a new connector on the end. Um, that I found at a junkyard, and um, I got a lot cleaner readings when I did that. Um, but I, I wasn't convinced that that was the only problem. I, I, I still was pretty sure there was something going on inside that cluster, so I, I pulled it open, and um, this time I took the actual gauges right off of the board, which I, I didn't realize until recently that you could do. And sure enough, underneath there, uh, there was a burnt trace, uh, which is actually, that is the ground um, circuit that you see there that's burnt up like almost like, perfectly like a fuse almost. And uh, it was hidden behind the gauges. And uh, I tried soldering this, um, which was not working at all. It's just very, very fragile material. Um, so I, I wasn't able to do that. What I ended up doing was connecting this lug, which is, it is an electrical ground connector, I think that's designed to bridge from one part of the cluster to another. Um, but I kind of bridged that with a wire that went straight to the ground pin to, of the connector. And um, finally, at that point, I was, I was getting that ground continuity all through the gauge, all around the perimeter of the gauge. Which is nice. And on these pins, my first test was to 
put the electrical connections back and just see if I was getting the same fluctuation. And um, um, I was very happy to see that when I turned on the lights, the, the gauges were rock steady. And when I used the turn signal, um, they also were, they didn't move at all. And I, I was just double checking to make sure all of the pins in the connector were pointing at the right bulbs and all the myriad things that that connector you know connects to. Uh, but once I was satisfied with that, I I put the car back together and took it for a drive. And um, I was very happy to see that after you know half an hour of driving, the temperature gauge, which was never behaved like this before but it was struggling to reach the 80 degree celsius mark after about 30 or 40 minutes of driving and um you know i consider that to be the middle of the range and um it was just just very gratifying to finally fix that so if you're having trouble with the grounding issues hopefully this video is helpful to you um i know it was definitely a struggle for me but um uh, good luck Thanks.